Welcome to lecture number 30 of BCE 463-663, Modern Control. Today's topic is designing LQG LTR feedback controllers when you have server compensators. Now, the previous design that we had with LQG LTR uh, feedback control didn't result in a DC gain of 1. What we could do is adjust the DC gain so that it was 1, basically scale up the input. If I do that, however, is no longer optimal, and if the dynamics change slightly, I haven't made the DC gain 1. I, I'm unable to compensate with the open loop uh, compensation like that. What I could do is use the server compensator. What server compensators do is they force the DC gain to 1. So what I'd like to do in this lecture is exactly that. Let's add a server compensator to my LQG LTR method to force at steady state a DC, to force my plant to track the steady state out output of the set, uh, re reference model. So this will be the feedback control system. I've got my reference model, how I want the system to behave. I've got my plant, and I've got a server compensator. This will integrate the difference between the plant and the reference model. There should be minus sign there. I'll now have feedback gains defined. I need to find the feedback gain times the state of the reference model, the feedback gain times the state x, and the feedback gain times my server compensator. Find all those gains. And we'll do that using LQG LTR methods. So the formulation is you first take the plant dynamics, x dot equals ax plus bu, take the reference model dynamics, add to it the servo compensator dynamics, put that all in state space, and I'll wind up with the following system. Here's the plant states, servo compensator states, reference model states. The input affects the plant through the B matrix. The set point affects the reference model through its B matrix, and the servo compensator sees the difference between Y and Y model. I now want to find the feedback gains times X times Z times X model, basically find full state feedback to force uh, the servo states to zero, or the, error, the input to the servo state to zero, forcing the reference model to track the plant. In that case, the system output will just be the servo state. As an example of how this works, let's go back and use that heat equation one more time. And I want to force the heat equation to behave like the following undamped system, underdamped system. Again, this is a little bit unreasonable, but I just want to see if I can do it. You can tell that this is somewhat unreasonable because if I look at the open loop response, here's what the reference model behaves like, the red line. Here's what the plant, the heat equation, behaves like. Heat equations don't like to oscillate. This one's very slow. I'm trying to speed it up drastically and make it oscillate. If I can do that, I can do just about anything. So, what I first do is generate the augmented system. We've got the plant dynamics, the reference model dynamics. I'll then put them all together with the servo compensator. So here's the plant, here's the servo, there's the reference model. I'll have the output be the um, plant's output and the reference model output for my step response, so you can see if it's tracking. And I'll define the feedback gains. I'll let Q be my servo state. As we mentioned before, when I use LQR methods, the output that you want to measure is the servo. By forcing the servo state to converge, I force the outputs to converge. And now using LQR methods, I take my Q times a large number, in this case a million, to find my feedback gains. When I'm done, I can find the closed loop poles. This is my reference model. I would want it to behave. Here's how the plant's behaving. You can tell the plant isn't that much different than the reference model, so it won't be tracking all that well. If I look at the step response, that's kind of what I see. Here's how the system should behave, the red line. Here's how it does behave with a weighting of 10 to the 6th. Close, but not quite. If I want better tracking, I need to increase Q. So this is for weighting of 10 to the 6th. If we increase the weighting to 10 to the 9th, I get closer tracking. Increase weighting to 10 to the 12th, it's almost 10, dead on. Again, this is 10 to the 6th, 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 12th. 
What that shows is with LQG LTR methods and a server compensator, I can force the plant to behave like the reference model almost dead on, even when the plant doesn't want to behave that way. Uh, the gains I get are a little bit unreasonable, but that's because what I'm trying to do is something the plant doesn't want. If I look at the open loop system, the heat equation behaves like this. I have a four stage RC filter, the settling time is about 40 seconds, no overshoot. I'm trying to take a system which behaves like the heat equation, doesn't want to oscillate, wants to take 40 seconds, and try to force it to behave like a system that's underdamped, settling out in four seconds. If you completely ignore how the system wants to behave, you can do it, but it's going to take a lot of control effort. Maybe a better design would be to look at the open loop system and see this is how it wants to behave. Let's define a desired resp response by reference model that's a little bit more reasonable. Instead of settling out in five seconds, let's just have it settle out twice as fast in 20 seconds. And instead of making it oscillate, let's have just a little bit of overshoot. So maybe a better reference model would be this. Uh, this has a dominant pole at 0.4 for a set 10 second settling time and 10% overshoot. If I use that for my reference model and now find my observer gains and my feedback gains, the gains are much more reasonable than, than they were, were before. The smaller gains tell me that my reference model is more reasonable and the system will probably behave better. If I look at the step response then, even with the lower gains, I have my plant, the blue line, behaving almost exactly like my re reference model. That's probably because I chose a reference model that behaves more like the way the, way the plant wants to behave. It doesn't take as much control effort to make the plant behave the way it wants. It takes a lot of control effort to make it behave something completely different than its nature, such as a quick system that's oscillating. But with LQG LTR methods, I can do it. If I have the server compensator, Note that the DC gain was 1 automatically. I'm always tracking the steady state value of the output. So that's just another tool in your tool chest. You now have a couple tools for designing feedback controllers. I can use pole placement. I can use LQG methods. Or the last one was LQG LTR. Three different tools.